Hello, this is Mighty Owl. It's time for spring cleaning, and you've been asked to organize the craft area. You decide that first you want to organize the ribbons by length. Well, one way that you can organize your information is by using a line plot. Ever heard of that before? A line plot is a graph that displays data by using a number line. So, let's find the measurements of the lengths of ribbon. Here is a picture of one. Let's take a moment to look at the ruler. Now, each of these numbers represents one inch. And you can see the tick marks in between. Those indicate half of an inch. And these tick marks that are in between are quarter inches, or one-fourth of an inch. And these little tick marks are one-eighth of an inch. And now that we can read the ruler, let's measure the ribbon. Okay, let's see here. The ribbon goes past the number four and stops at the marking for one-half. So it looks like this piece of ribbon is four and a half inches long. Nice. Let's try another one. Okay, this ribbon goes past the three until it gets to three-fourths. And that means it has a length of three and three-fourths inches. Oh, I forgot. Let's put this information on the line plot before we lose track of it. Okay, so there's the first one, there's the second one. And now, let's measure one more before filling in the graph. Okay, this ribbon stops, ooh, right at the four. It's exactly four inches long. Now let's add it to our line plot. Now let's just jump ahead for a second and see what the line plot would look like after we measured all of our lengths of ribbon. Wow, look at all those dots. Since there are 11 dots on the graph, that means that you measured 11 pieces of ribbon. What observations can we make about our ribbons? We notice one dot each on three, on three and three fourths, and on four and one fourths inches long. So we have those lengths of ribbons. We can also see that there are more dots here on the four. That means there were more pieces that were four inches long than any other length. And we can see that two pieces were three and a half inches, and two pieces were four and a half inches long, since there are two dots. Measuring's fun. Let's measure some more objects before continuing on with line plots. Wow, look at all these objects. Let's find out how long they are. Okay, the snake ends right at the five. Well, that means it's five inches long. We're getting pretty good at measuring. Slithering on to the next object. This stick is longer than six inches, and since it ends at the one half, ah, that means it's six and a half inches. Hey, there's my pencil, I was looking for that. Oh, and it looks like it stops at the one fourth mark just after the two. So this means it's two and one fourth inches long. Great job measuring. Now that I have my pencil back, it's gonna be easier to write down all these measurements. Okay, you've collected a bunch of data or numbers, and now we can look at more line plots and see how that helps us to organize data. Let's look at some information and create a line plot. We have a table that shows how many hours students spend on homework. Looks like just a bunch of numbers, right? That is, until we start putting that information onto the line plot. Okay, the first number that's on the table is one half. So let's put a dot there. Perfect. And I like to cross off data as I graph it to help me keep track of what I've already graphed. That way you don't repeat yourself without meaning to. Okay, let's continue to work down the column. Next is three-fourths. So you mark that with a dot and we cross it off the table. Next is zero. One and one-fourth. This is the one-fourth marking right past the one. There we go, great. Next is three-fourths. Okay, done with that column. Moving on to the next column. Starting here with one and a half. And that's the halfway mark between one hole and two holes. Keep going and fill out the rest of the line plot. Woohoo! What a great job creating the line plot. Now we can understand those numbers better. Let's look at where most of the dots are located. So we can see that most people work on homework for between a half hour and an hour. Now let's look at another line plot before we run out of time. 
Hey, look at that. This line plot is about running. All right, let's start answering these questions. Okay, in order to find out how many students ran two laps, we need to count the number of dots above the two. So we got one, two, three, four. Four students ran two laps. The next question is about the most amount of laps ran in total. Well, our graph goes up to four, so that tells us that the most amount of laps ran is four laps. Woo, we are just running laps around these problems. Let's keep it going. Next, we want to find out how many laps did most students run. Well, which number has the greatest amount of dots over it? Three has five dots. Ah, so most students ran three laps. And we're on to the last question already. How many students ran more than one lap? Oh, this one's a little harder. But we can do it. More than one lap would mean they ran either two, three, or four laps. Well, there are four students who ran two laps, five students who ran three laps, and one student who ran four laps. Now we need to find the total by adding those numbers up. Four plus five is nine. Nine plus one is ten. So, 10 students ran more than one lap. To sum all that up, a line plot is a graph that uses a number line to organize data. It sure helps me to visualize information. And now, I'm visualizing the next lesson. See you there!